So now in this next video, we're going to continue our discussion on long distance transport within cells, within plants, excuse me. And that transport is going to be via bulk flow. But now we're going to talk about the last sort of mechanism of bulk flow. We talked about transpiration, we talked about cohesion, and the cohesion tension hypothesis, and now we're going to talk about the idea of stomata opening and closing, being the final sort of way that we make sure that bulk flow of water and min minerals happens throughout the plant. But before we do this, we have to actually recall a little bit of plant anatomy. So we're going to recall leaf structure, because you cannot understand the stomatal opening and closing unless you understand how a leaf is arranged. And a leaf is arranged in the following manner. A leaf, like any plant organ, has ground tissue. And ground tissue consists of mainly, this ground tissue of the leaf consists of something we mentioned, mesophyll. Mesophyll is simply speaking photosynthesis or photosynthetic cells that are within uh, the parenchyma. Photosynthesis that occurs in parenchyma cells. Remember, parenchyma cells are maneuverable, they're adaptable, they're very shapeable, and these parenchyma cells will be shapeable in the sense that they'll have many chloroplasts within them, very much devoted to photosynthesis within this mesophyll ground tissue leaf layer. Here, what we're also going to divide into is the upper layer of mesophyll, and also with the upper layer will also will be a lower layer. Now, in the upper layer of mesophyll, this is where we have columnar cells. This is all a part of a leaf. Columnar cells. So what happens here? In the columnar cells, this is basically our main area of photosynthesis, whereas the lower layer will be a pa an arrangement, uh, loosely arranged cells, basically. That's all we'll have here, not these strong column cells. We'll have a loosely arranged uh, cell or sort of idea and structure here. This will actually be involved in gas exchange for the most part. So gas exchange, that's going to be important in just a second. So we are focusing on the lower layer in uh, a little bit. So upper layer, lower layer of this ground tissue gives us this overall leaf structure. But we also are going to look at not just the ground tissue, but also the dermal tissue. The dermal tissue of leaves. The dermal tissue of leaves contains an epidermis, and the epidermis is simply the upper and lower sort of surface, the very surface of these leaves. Upper and lower surface and what specifically is unique about this upper and lower in surface? It's covered by a cuticle, just like much of the outside shoots of a plant are covered by a cuticle. Why is it covered by a cuticle? Well, that is, of course, a waxy layer devoted to reducing H2O loss. So this reduces H2O loss. Okay, so we know that. That's our epidermis sort of cuticle story. Within or of this epidermis and this dermal tissue layer, another structure that's very important to understand is the stomata. So the stomata is going to be critical because that's our third mechanism, and we have to really understand its structure before we actually get into its mechanistic function. Here, the stomata, which are found in the dermal tissue of leaves, stomata control gas exchange. That's their number one job. They control gas exchange. When we talk about gas exchange, we mean the exchange of O2 and CO2. Those are the two gases involved in photosynthesis and cell respiration. In essence, the stomata are going to be open in the day. Why are they open during the day? Well, that's because that's when a plant does photosynthesis. That's when a plant absorbs light and gives off oxygen, and it absorbs CO2 and gives off oxygen through those photosynthetic processes that we know in great detail, of course. So it's open during the day, and then it would be closed at night. So these stomata, stoma means opening, it's going to be closed at night, or um, also during a drought. You wouldn't want to be doing gas exchange if you don't have anything to exchange. So. This is going to be a point at which we may lose some H2O because even though we're exchanging gas, we're also going to be allowing water vapor to escape sometimes. And that's going to be important when we talk about the third and final mechanism right over here. That will be the stomata opening and closing. 
stomata opening slash closing. So we have transpiration, which in combination with cohesion, uh, tension hypothesis, in combination with stomata opening and closing is what allows for bulk flow of water and minerals to happen. Take a look at figure 36.13 as we go through this. This can be a little bit confusing because of the way that it works, its mechanism specifically, but we'll just highlight the details. So here, first of all, let's go over a bit of background. Uh, what's going to happen actually in the stomata opening is that about 95% of H2O loss is going to be through the, through the stomata. H2O loss is through the stomata. Because the stomata is opening and it's closing, it's a very important point at which we are going to be losing the majority of the H2O that is lost in the plant. In addition, each stoma, that's the singular of stomata, stomata is the plural, each stoma is going to be with a pair of what we call guard cells. Now we've talked about guard cells briefly in our study of plants thus far, but right now we're going to highlight a little bit more detail what guard cells do. Guard cells' main job is to change shape. Okay, They change shape due to H2O movement. So when water moves into them or out of them or near them or away from them, they will change their shape. Specifically, that shape change will be in one of two ways. Let's say water moves into our GC, our guard cell. Okay, if we have water move into it, the guard cell is going to turn turgid, meaning that it will be full of water, and it will also bend. When it's turgid and it bends, this is going to be a signal for the pore, the stoma, to open. So the open, we'll have an open pore orientation. Well, let's say water is moving out of the guard cell. So out of GC. What happens then? Here, the guard cell structure, because it's moving out, water that is, we're going to have a flaccid structure of the guard cell, and the guard cell will collapse. It will essentially close on itself, and if it closes on itself, that would mean that the pore closes also. So we close the pore. Okay, let's see now how this all plays a role, including this leaf structure, a terminology that we went over in the idea and the mechanism of bulk flow. So this is the actual mechanism. So the mechanism is uh, several different steps that are going to be very important in giving us an overall idea of how we open and close a stomata in order to promote bulk flow. So let's start at the beginning. The mechanism begins in the following way. What we're going to first have is the absorption of blue light. So blue light is part of the visible light spectrum, and when you absorb blue light, this actually, in a plant, triggers H+, those proton uh, pumps in the guard cell membrane. It triggers proton pumps in GC membrane. Okay, what does it trigger those pumps to do? Those proton pumps will actually, this blue light, then triggers the pumping of H plus out of the cell. So you already should be having an idea of what H plus moving out of the cell is going to possibly cause. Okay, This will cause, if you don't already know, a gradient to form. Because we're going to have one side of the cell with a lot more H plus than the other. There's going to be a gradient that drives facilitated, so a lot of transport themes here. Gradient drives facilitated diffusion of two ions of K plus, which is potassium, into, or just one ion, into the guard cell. So potassium is going into the guard cell. Take a look at figure 36.13 as we do this narration. So the gradient of H plus drives the facilitated diffusion of K plus into K plus is going into our guard cell. So now we're getting more and more positive, in essence, in the guard cell. Very positive guard cell is going to be made. Now, later on, we're going to try to counteract that positiveness by having chloride ions plus other negative ions are going to say, hey, it's so positive inside the guard cell, let's try to make this a little more neutral so those other negative ions will follow. 
So now they're trying to combat this gradient that has been formed. So K plus is going to move into the cell because all of the outside of the cell is very, very positive. Now we're trying to make the inside and the outside equally positive. But now the outside is going to say, oh, it's too positive. Let me move some negative ions into here. Now, overall, the big idea behind these sort of initial steps is that this creates the following. It creates a situation in which the solute concentration, bracket for concentration, is actually going to be now, because we're full of these negative and positive ions, all of which are solutes, is going to be higher inside the guard cell. So you should already be thinking, if we have a high solute concentration, a hypertonic concentration inside the guard cell, what's going to be our natural biological response to that? That would be, you know what, let's make it less solute. Let's make it less hypertonic. Let's move some H2O into or out of the guard cell. You want to move it into the guard cell because it's full of these solutes. H2O moves into the guard cell. Notice what's going to happen. Into guard cell. Look what we can probably do here. Into guard cell via osmosis. So we're going to easily move into the guard cell. No problems, no energy needed. What does this turn the guard cell in terms of shape? GC is equal to, I'll tell you that it will turn into a turgid shape and it will also bend, both of which will change its shape overall, changes shape, so much so that the shape changes in a way that we have the pore opens. When the pore opens, you have what? You have H2O loss. When you have H2O loss, what's going to start to combat that H2O loss? Transpiration will say, hey, H2O loss, let's transpire and pull some water from the bottom, and in order to do that, you will also need some cohesion to do the transpiration help. And then all of this was started because the stomata opened and closed, let's say, later on. You can also look at this from the closing side of the story. You just switch around the ions, switch around the things that are coming in and out, and you'll see the way that the stomata closes. They do that in figure 36.13. Overall, what I want you to understand is that water moves through three ways. Transpiration, bulk flow of water. Transpiration stomato opening and closing, and also cohesion tension hypothesis, all of which work together in a cumulative, cohesive, and collective function to give you the movement of water from all the way down in the roots, all the way up to the shoots, because you have this initial need that's fulfilled and fulfilled and fulfilled over and over and over again by these three mechanisms.